the Sharpshoot with Aussie is brought to you in part by Talkin' Wrestling Network. Subscribe today and by RopeBreakWrestling.com. Get out of the bleachers and get in the ring. Ropebreak. What's going on, YouTubers, wrestling fans, and rope breakers alike? I am Aussie and I am back. I will be your host for the Sharpshoot, which will be taking place of Rope Break Radio on RopeBreakWrestling.com. I'm proud to say that this show is also going to be airing on Talkin' Wrestling Network on YouTube. Uh, so if you're not watching on Talkin' Wrestling Network, make sure you at least go over there and subscribe. And if you're watching on Talkin' Wrestling Network, please make sure you head over to Rope Break Wrestling's YouTube page and subscribe to us there as well. Uh, this is not going to be a show that you're going to want to miss. Uh, every single week we're going to run the sharpshoot, and I am going to talk to you for roughly an hour, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more, and we're going to go over the hottest topics in WWE, whether it be news, rumors, uh, anything like that. We're going to talk classic matches. We're going to shoot on various different topics out there. Most importantly, your voice is going to be heard as it always has been on Rope Break Wrestling. I thank the guys over at Talk and Wrestling Network for accepting this show onto their network. And uh, hopefully some new viewers will be able to tune in and we can get you glued to this show, which, like I said, will run once a week. But let's get right into the show here. Let's uh, stop wasting time. I have to tell you, Got to wear a hat today, this week, because I've got a pretty big-sized egg on the side of my head after uh, being attacked by my own brother. And if you're not a fan of Rope Break Wrestling, uh, you won't know that Nick the Cena fan, uh, last episode of Rope Break Radio last week, Nick the Cena fan barged into my home and beat the hell out of me with... None other than a steel cookie sheet. It, uh, it actually embarrasses me to say that out loud, a steel cookie sheet, but uh, came right into my house, slapped the shit out of me with a steel cookie sheet, and uh, I was busted up pretty good. Had to be out for a little while. Uh, for those of you that didn't get to see the footage, uh, we're going to go ahead and roll the footage right now. It'd be gobbledygooker. Oh, hold on, guys. Let's go grab that. Let's go grab that. Another, where's the mailman again? It must be. Uh, what the, what the hell? What the? Oh no. What the? Oh man, it's what Nick. the? Oh my god. Holy. It, it's Nick the Cena fan. Oh my god. Oh my god, he's back. He's back oh for revenge. He just, he just took out Aussie. Oh my god. Oh and my after, god. After being taken out at Money in the Bank through the couch, Nick the Cena fan, he's back. Oh and, my uh, god. He's looking he's looking for revenge, obviously. Holy shit, I don't even know what to say. Wow. Oh my uh, god. That was Aussie's that was, out cold. Um, Oh no. You want a revolution? You got one. I'm back. Still a little painful for me to watch there, uh, especially being my own brother. Uh, the whole attack, I guess, stemmed from the fact that uh, we were doing a live pay per view uh, reaction show for Money in the Bank a couple months back on Rope Break Wrestling's YouTube page. And uh, one of the fans wanted me to put Nick the Cena fan through the couch with an attitude adjustment. Uh, we did it in good fun. Nick was actually pretty injured, pretty banged up after the apple juice adjustment, as I like to call it, or as Grimm's Toy Show likes to call it. And uh, he wanted revenge. He came back, and he beat me to a pulp with a steel cookie sheet. And uh, again, pretty embarrassing, but I'm back. And as Eric Bischoff would say, and better than ever. Uh, I mean, this show... I'm pretty excited about this show. It's going to be a little bit different than Rope Break Radio. Obviously, we're not running a live hangout, so we're not going to have live uh, viewers joining the show like we did on Rope Break, Wrestling, or Rope Break Radio. rather. But what we will be doing is we will be sending out poll holes. Uh, we will be giving you guys the uh, option to ask questions, and sometimes, once in a while, I will bring guests on the show uh, to speak on certain topics. 
couple different topics that I want to get into today. Uh, the first being SummerSlam. Kind of want to run down the SummerSlam card and exactly uh, you know what my thoughts on it were. I actually really enjoyed SummerSlam, although I was watching from a hospital bed um, with a mild concussion. Uh, you know, a lot of good matches right off the rip. I enjoyed the the Rusev versus Swagger match, even though it didn't really turn out to be a flag match. Uh, the match between Rollins and Ambrose was absolutely uh, awesome. We had uh, what other matches? The Brie Bella versus Stephanie match was excellent. Um, I loved the heel turn. Loved Stephanie's gear, of course. Uh, everybody that knows me knows I'm a sucker for Stephanie McMahon uh, in just about anything. Uh, I'd probably like it even better, though. She, well, it, you know, we'll leave it off there. Uh, Roman's reign began. That's what I like to uh, you like to throw that term around, Roman's reign. Um, we expect him to eventually be the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And I like to say that his reign really kicked off against Randy Orton there. Pretty solid match. Orton really did a good job in that match of making Reigns look good. Love the fact that he brought the punt back and threatened to punt Reigns in the head. That's the type of stuff that I like to see from Orton. I think it elevates him as a heel and in turn elevates his opponent as a face. Uh, so good job from Orton there. And uh, you know we could sit here and we could talk about every single match. But the most important thing that we need to cover is the Brock Lesnar versus John Cena main event because there was a lot of people with different mixed reactions on this match. And uh, I think it's pretty clear cut and dry to be perfectly honest with you. The match was excellent, served its purpose, told a story, was excellent. Uh, a lot of people were looking for that really back and forth, back and forth, maybe some kind of you know Cena exchange uh, with a – you know, with the chain again or something like that. Cena, I don't believe, even got in an attitude adjustment. Brock Lesnar hits 16 German suplexes, throws Cena around the ring like a rag doll. And I think that's exactly what the match called for. And I'm not saying that because I'm not a huge John Cena fan. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I still appreciate a good wrestling match. I'm saying it because Brock Lesnar is supposed to be an animal, a force, a beast, unstoppable. Uh, and that's exactly what he was in that match. I think if he went and beat the Undertaker streak and then didn't beat John Cena, I think that would have been a complete waste of the streak there. Now Brock Lesnar beats the streak, and defeats Cena at SummerSlam, this is arguably one of the biggest years for any WWE superstar ever. And uh, we're going to get into it a little bit later about whether or not Lesnar deserves it with his part-time status. Uh, but let's face it, a lot of fans were chanting boring during the match. Absolute idiots. Uh, that match told a story. That match did exactly what it was supposed to do. And for that, I give SummerSlam an A- uh, for a grade, a, a letter grade, if I had to give it something. A-. minus. All the matches, uh, none of them really disappointed me. Uh, some of them didn't wow me, but they did their job. You know, Jericho versus Wyatt uh, didn't really wow me, but it did its job. It was a pretty solid match. So with that being said, again, I give SummerSlam an A-. Hashtag WCW has been a big debate between wrestling fans and the outsiders, if you will, of uh, the rest of the world, so to speak. WCW to the rest of the world means Woman Crush Wednesday. To us wrestling fans, most of us at least, it means WCW, World Championship Wrestling. And... Uh, what I wanted to do with this segment here, I call it WC, or hashtag WCW, WCW. What it's going to be is a mix of both. We're going to have our Woman Crush Wednesday from World Championship Wrestling. And this week, it's none other than Nitro Girl Whisper. Whisper, if you take a, picture, or take a look at the picture of her right here, was Sean or is Sean Michaels' wife uh, back when she was in Nitro? The, the story goes that Michael saw her doing some sort of lap dance uh, on Nitro and absolutely fell in love with her, knew he had to have her right then and there. So uh, from there, Whisper, aka I believe her name's Rebecca Hickenbottom now after being married to Sean, uh, she and Sean. Obviously hooked up, uh, became husband and wife, and she actually put up with a lot of slack uh, with Sean's drug addiction 
and just Sean in general. Uh, so big ups to her. Not only is she an absolute smoke bomb, but she uh, is obviously a pretty strong-minded woman as well. She is our hashtag WCWWCW. If you want to see a specific WCWWCW on next week's show, Tweet us. You can tweet to me personally at I am Aussie using the hashtag Sharpshoot, or what you can always do is is tweet us at Rope Break Wrestling again using the hashtag Sharpshoot. You can also use the hashtag WCW WCW. Uh, let's get this thing rolling. A lot of people are arguing. Let's make peace. It doesn't have to be about one WCW or the other WCW. It can be about both. Love women, love wrestling, and that's what it's all about. The next segment we're going to have on this show every single week is It's True, It's True. And this week I want to talk about the new WWE World Heavyweight Championship title. Listen, it's true, it's true. The thing is absolutely ugly. And you're saying to yourself, why? It's basically just the same exact title as we had before. Exactly. And that one was ugly too. I don't like that WWE title at all. Too much black. doesn't look like a championship to me. Uh, only outlined in gold and then the diamonds there. Not a huge fan of it. In the ba or Back in the day, we had the Winged Eagle, the Attitude Era belt, even the John Cena Spinner belt. I know a lot of people weren't big fans of that, but they were big gold. That's what it's all about is the gold. It can't even be nicknamed the gold if half the belt is black. And uh, I know a lot of other fans are with me on this. If you disagree with me, let me know. Tweet me. Again, you know the uh, the tags. At I am Aussie. At Rope Break Wrestling. Hashtag Sharpshoot. Hashtag It's True. It's True. And tell me what you think about the new WWE title belt. I think it absolutely sucks. It's true. It's damn true. <laughs> Cena turned heel, lol, how about kick out at two? C Nation for life, so what you gotta do? Really? First the kid attacks me with a cookie sheet. Puts me out of action for multiple days and then he's gonna come in interrupt my first episode of the sharpshoot it's a goddamn disgrace nick the cena fan people that's uh that's how he is just dipping his hands into whatever he can get into uh it's absolutely ridiculous and i apologize for that uh, another segment though i am however excited to introduce to the show that will be uh, on the show weekly is how do you like me now This week, I want to talk about Brock Lesnar and whether or not he deserves the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Yes. And you're saying to yourself, are you kidding me? He's a part-timer. This is a joke. He doesn't deserve the belt. He's not for the company. He's not with the company. What about the other guys that work hard 24-7, 365? They're always on the road. You're right in that term. But guess where you're wrong when you say Brock Lesnar doesn't deserve it. Now listen. I'm not saying Brock Lesnar loves the business. I'm not saying that it's good that he's a part-timer. What I am saying is he is a monster heel. Right now, on one of the most, or not even one of, he's arguably the biggest heel of all time in his current run right now. And I'll tell you why. Not only are people pissed that he ended the Undertaker streak, not only are people pissed that he is the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, or the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. People are also pissed because he's doing all that as a part-timer. So he is essentially the biggest heel going right now. And put it this way, if Brock Lesnar wasn't part-time, you wouldn't have a problem with him beating the streak or taking the title. So the fact that he's part-time adds a lot to his heel persona because, hey, he can show up whenever the hell he wants, whip ass, and leave. And that's what's so good about it. Now, 
the reason why I think this is great for the company is because Lesnar is being built as a mega heel, and that can mean only one thing, that down the road, a mega face is going to come and whip his ass, and it could be Roman Reigns. I'm not saying I think Roman Reigns is ready for that, but if they really, really, really want to build Roman Reigns as the next big thing, why not have him beat the next big thing? Because let's be honest, a win over John Cena right now is nowhere near as big as a win over Brock Lesnar. If Roman Reigns can beat the guy that beat the streak, if he can beat the guy that beat the shit out of Cena, then he essentially becomes the biggest babyface in the company, and that's how you book people, and that's why I say Brock Lesnar deserves and belongs WWE World Heavyweight Champion. So, how do you like me now? How do you like me now? All right, all right, all right. I know you're probably a little bit mad or disappointed at me after that How Do You Like Me Now segment. But I'm going to ease up the mood a little bit by giving you the next segment, which is going to be something that we do weekly on the show here. It is my WWE Network Pick of the Week. That's right. Every single week I'm going to give you a pay-per-view or a show or something on the WWE Network that you've got to take a look at. I do the filtering for you so you don't have to filter through everything. So this week, while you while you cool down after you know Aussie says that Lesnar be, belongs champion, that's a bunch of bullshit. Why don't you just cool down a little bit? And this week, my WWE Network pick of the week is SummerSlam 2000. Absolutely excellent show. We're still a little bit in that SummerSlam mood, and there's no better way to watch SummerSlam than with one of the biggest and best storytelling feuds and matches in WWE history, in my opinion. You've got the Love Triangle featuring Kurt Angle, Triple H, and Stephanie McMahon. Stephanie McMahon became Kurt Angle's valet. Uh, so to speak, not necessarily a manager, but kind of like his advocate. Triple H, then married to Stephanie at the time, obviously didn't like the relationship that they had. Kurt making moves on Stephanie, even kissing her at one point in time. And then, to top it all off, they're battling each other alongside The Rock for that WWF championship. And uh, let me tell you, this is one of my favorite matches of all time. I'm talking WrestleManias, I'm talking Raws, SmackDowns, any pay-per-view. This is one of the best matches of all time, and you need to check it out. Note the big, uh, the big point that you want to look for in this match, Kurt Angle concussion. Take a look, see if you can find it, and uh, let me know what you think about that match by tweeting at I am Aussie at Rope Break Wrestling, using that hashtag, hashtag sharpshoot and hashtag WWE Network Pick, or you can also hashtag uh, Angles Concussion, something like that. Let me know what you think about that match. Hopefully you haven't seen it before, and I can turn you on to something uh, that you haven't seen before. Now you're going to uh, pass on to the next generation of WWE fans. Either way, that is my WWE Network Pick of the Week, and you don't even have to pay $9.99. Well, while we're on the topic of picks, I might as well give you my promo pick of the week. And, uh... There's no denying the fact that The Rock cut the best promos of all time. And none more evident than his promo at WrestleMania 2000, WrestleMania 16, when he was going into that fatal four-way match with Triple H, Mick Foley, and The Big Show. Take a look at this promo from WrestleMania 2000. It's my promo pick of the week. After every interview, after every run-in, after every backstabbing, after every win, after every loss, after everything they've thrown at The Rock, and after everything The Rock has thrown back, after every chokeslam, after every mandible claw, after every pedigree, The Rock says this. As if he could do it all over again, he will say, finally, The Rock has come back to WrestleMania. The Rock without a doubt, still uh, cuts the best promos of all time. And I shouldn't say still because, let's face it, he's not the rock he used to be when he comes back. Uh, not quite uh, the cocky persona with the, with the sideburns, the shades, the million-dollar shoes. Uh, that's the rock that I grew up with. That's the rock I like to see. Um, but, you know, 
there's a time and place for everything. And you know, The Rock became a multi-platform star, and I still love him to this day. Still one of my biggest influences in life, uh, laugh or not. Uh, the Rock was a huge role model for me growing up. So Rock, you ever catch the show, man? You probably won't. But thank you for everything that you've done. Uh, for wrestling, for WWE, and for us fans, uh, you are greatly appreciated, at least by myself. Now, the final topic I'm going to uh, discuss this week, it's the closing statement. It's the sharp shoot. That's right. And the sharp shoot this week is the next new generation era. We've been hearing a lot of talk about this reality era, so to speak. That's what Triple H calls it. We are seeing a transition with a lot of the new talent from NXT making their move into, uh, you know, into the main roster, into the main events, and uh, a lot of people are saying just that it's the next new generation era. History does repeat itself in wrestling. Uh, I'm going to tell you that it is 110 percent the next new generation era. But do you really want another new generation era? Sure, we loved stars like Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, Diesel. But do you remember the rest of the new generation era? It absolutely sucked. It was terrible. Cartoon gimmicks like Fandango, Santino Moret. Oh, wait, that's this new generation era. Terrible cartoony gimmicks. Sick of it. Get rid of the guys like Fondango. I'm not saying get rid of them. Get rid of their stupid gimmicks. Fondango, Adam Rose, Los Matadores. Absolutely atrocious gimmicks that nobody wants to see. Listen, the only thing that I can hope for and that everybody can hope for is that if this is the second new generation era, let's fast forward a couple years to that second attitude era. That's what I want to see. Right now, I believe we're seeing Roman Reigns in a ringmaster type role, so to speak, like Austin was. Uh, right now, I don't think Reigns fits in that ugly vest that isn't anything like the Shield vest. He's got a terrible, theme, terrible version of the old Shield theme song, and uh, he's really not cutting it on the mic so far. If they want Roman Reigns to be the next big thing, it's time to strip him of the Shield and make him the next big thing that he he has the potential to be. You can't just keep packaging him as that guy from the Shield. Um, he can do his Superman punches and his spears and you know the the apron kick or whatever the hell he calls it. But lose the ugly vest that looks nothing like the the original vest he wore. Lose that kids bop version of the Shield theme song. It's absolutely atrocious. It's so much worse than the regular Shield song was. If you're going to keep that song, why don't you just get rid of the Shield part in the beginning and play the original theme? Um, I just don't understand why they went and kids bopped the version of the song. It's absolutely terrible. The New Generation era for a little while kicked ass. It's got a huge part in wrestling history. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, uh, like I said, Razor Ramon, Diesel, even Triple H and The Rock in the begin or at the end there. Stone Cold Steve Austin as the ringmaster. But let's face it, New Generation era not quite good enough for me. And if you really want to draw ties, this must be the second New Generation era because, like the last New Generation era, this New Generation era losing a lot of money fast because they're not satisfying the fans' needs. If you really want to make that big bucks. Give the fans what they want. Let's see blood. That was what was really missing from that John Cena, Brock Lesnar main event. If you really want to sell somebody beating the shit out of somebody else, there's got to be a little bit of juice in the match. Brock Lesnar said he was going to leave him in a pool of blood, piss, and urine, and puke. I didn't see any of them. Uh, and honestly, the only thing I wanted to see was blood. And we didn't get it. Uh, there needs to be blood. There needs to be pile drivers. There needs to be all this other shit. chair shots. I know not to the head uh, because uh, you know of stuff that that happens in the past or that has happened in the past with uh, too many chair shots to the head. But listen, these guys are entertainers. There's no reason Mick Foley uh, uh, got blood every single match. Mick Foley went out there, jumped off uh, Hell in a Cell, jumped through tables with fire, went on the tacks. Uh, I think we're kind of slapping Mick Foley in the face here if we're going to sell Brock Lesnar beating the shit out of John Cena and we don't have any blood or anything at all. 
Uh, you want to see an old-fashioned ass kicking? Go back to Hell in the Cell 98, Undertaker versus Mankind. That's an ass whooping, and that's what it's sold. So in closing, to finish off my sharpshoot, it is the second new generation era, but I want you guys to think long and hard whether or not you actually want a second new generation era. Or should we just fast forward to the meat and potatoes that's coming in the next few years after guys like Cena and uh, Orton and them are gone? I say we fast forward. This has been the first episode of the Sharpshoot Show. I'm your host, Aussie, and I really thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to come check out the show. If you enjoyed it, please let me know. Again, the handles are at I am Aussie and at Rope Rate Wrestling. I want to know your feedback. How can I make this show better? Uh, what would you like to see? Uh, give us suggestions for segments. Uh, did you like It's True, It's True? Did you like WCW, WCW? How do you like me now? The Sharpshoot. Um, if you want to see me kick Nick the Cena fan's ass again, give me a hell yeah. Uh, let me know what your thoughts on the show are because let's be honest. Uh, the show is going nowhere without you guys, and I want to make you guys happy uh, and show you some of the stuff that you want to see on the show. So let me know again by tweeting either of those handles using the hashtag SharpShoot. Once again, for Rope Break Wrestling, for TRN, I am Aussie. Thanks again for checking out the show, and we'll catch you next week on the Sharp Show. Sharp Shoot with Aussie is brought to you in part by the Talking Wrestling Network. Subscribe today and by RopeRakeWrestling.com. Get out of the bleachers. Get in the ring. Rope